Hey guys, Would y'all look right here, coming right down this right here. This is an alligator slide. When I was a boy, on way on the other end of this lake, I remember my mother worrying about us getting close because of alligators, but there wasn't any in here back then. These warmer days have brought them out and got them active. JB, I was working on the GNU, and when I came inside to take a break, get something to drink, he's got this little uh, toy fish, and he brought that and his bone to me. And when he does that, that tells me he wants to go fishing or hunting. So <laughs> I just quit work and uh, filled the truck up, and uh, we've come to go fishing. We want you guys to go with us. This is called Stone Lake. Um, as you guys know, uh, if you've seen the shorts I put up, the river's a half a mile out of its banks, and uh, there's absolutely no way I can fish that right now. Uh, I mean, the canoe, I just got to put uh, <clears throat> a little anchor made on it, and... Uh, put the uh, numbers and letters on it and a little touch up on the paint job and it'll be ready to go but I really need a trailer for that the main reason I bought it was so it would be easier on my back than the John boat but I think honestly it weighs more than the John boat I'm having to be careful because I know that there's rattlesnakes and when JB drops back behind me that's letting me know that uh, those snakes are about what you smell. He's such a good boy. And uh, he has a girlfriend named Ellie. And Ellie's mama and I have been talking and the next time she comes into season, I think we're going to see if uh, we can make uh, JB a daddy. I think he'll make a great daddy. Now, uh, about a year and a half ago, right down here, we really did some good. See, here's another gator slide. That must be a big one. We were in that little uh, slough right up there in my big boat and my cork went under and I reached down to grab the pole and that gator's head must have been as big as this five gallon bucket I'm toting. You smell that gator, don't you? Yeah, come on. Hey, let's go 25 more yards, come on. He said, but I smell him, Michael. You know what? I don't need to hold your leash. You know what you're doing. I don't even know why I was holding it. And I have seen more garbage, guys. I don't know why people have to dump as bad as they do. Uh, but they just throw everything out. When I smoked, I didn't even leave my cigarette butts out. I kind of wished I'd have brought something to uh, catch some bass with, but I didn't. Oh, now he's happy. Well, let's see if we can pull some shellcracker and bluegill out of here, guys. Pick up behind themselves. I don't understand it. Oh, and you guys check out... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give him a shout out to, to Matt Wells. Um, I'm, I'm going to give him another one when I uh, go after some Pompano, and we want you guys to come go with us on that. And that, that may be tomorrow. Um, the wind was just wrong today. Uh, you'd have been blown away on the beach. And I want to take the kayak out, uh, but uh, and I did try it. He uh, told me about a brand, and I managed to find one that was used. But uh, I'm not going to do it by myself. Uh, I get out there and have a problem, it could become life or death. So 
I'm gonna do some beach fishing, but Matt's channel is called Nomadic Kayak Fishing. And let me tell you what, this kid can fish. I'll say kid, young man. Um, at my age, if you're under 50, you're a kid. Uh, he'll take that kayak and go out uh, in the ocean and catch the biggest red snapper you've ever seen in your life. Kingfish, pigfish, um, now something is messing with that. But y'all check out Matt's channel. It's called Nomadic Kayak Fishing. Yep, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. That's a whole lot of worm. And I, yep, there he goes. Got him. Oh my goodness, this is a good fish right here. Oh, there's a, there's a turtle. I think that's a big old turtle, guys. Yep, he let go. He let go, JB. No, that's a fish. He just had me wrapped around something down there. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one, JB. Look at there. Look at that. Another, another big bluegill. No, I think that's a shell. That's a shell cracker. And he's got it swallowed. There we go. Guys, I want y'all to take a look at that. Now, this lake is famous for having some big shell cracker in it. If I can get his mouth to open up here. But yeah, y'all please check out Matt's channel and uh, hit the like and subscribe button on his channel if you will. No? That's a bluegill, JB. And a pretty one, too. I... The water's warming up and they're starting to get their colors back. And uh, I thought that was a shell cracker, especially the way he fought. My weight come off, I guarantee it did. All right, we're gonna we're gonna leave it right there for a few minutes. And I want to ask you guys a question: Have y'all ever noticed when you go fishing, the fish tend to pick one rod, and that's the one they'll hit? Because I've had nothing on this one, and I know it's on the bottom, within say eight feet of where I just threw that one. But anyway, uh, y'all check out Matt's channel. Um, <clears throat> he hasn't been doing it very long. Oh, I think we got one. Yeah, we do. We got one on here. That's what Shellcracker will do a lot of times. Nope. Well, I got somebody else's line. That's what I've been getting hooked on out there. That's what I've been getting hooked on. Somebody was hand lining for catfish, I guarantee you. Well, more garbage for me to clean up. Uh, that or they just got a backlash and they threw it out there because that's that, that's 20 pound test line. Hmm. Well, yeah, y'all uh, y'all help me with this uh dumping stuff. It's it, it gets on my nerves big time. That it, it. Look at there. You know, you, you, you get a blessed day of going fishing, the last thing you want to have to do is pick up somebody else's garbage. But this stuff can cause the wildlife a whole lot of problems. And I see a artificial lure right there. I wasn't raised to do that. I was raised to respect the environment and, and it's like when I was a teenager. I'd go to my grandparents on the weekends and I'd say, you know, can I can I go squirrel hunting? Granddaddy would say, well, you got about two hours before dark and I want your butt back 30 minutes before dark. Here's a, <clears throat> he'd give me five 22 shells and he'd say, I want five squirrels or I want five shells brought back. They, you know, they're cartridges, but they called them shells back then and or he did anyway so <clears throat> i made sure that i didn't miss and he didn't like them shot in the head he wanted squirrel brains and eggs 
That just sounds disgusting, doesn't it? But he sure liked it. And pickled pig's feet, too. But I got a bad backlash one day, and we were fishing. And uh, I asked him for his pocket knife, and I cut that line and redone it. And I left the line laying there on the ground that I'd pulled off. And he said, now, what are you going to do with that? I said, that what? He said, that line that you just put on the ground right there. He said, pick that up and put it in your pocket and don't let me catch you uh, littering again. And well, you didn't want to, you know, disappoint granddaddy. So um, I think people just don't care anymore. They're so used to going to the store and getting what they want. They don't realize where stuff comes from. We live on the only planet that we know for sure that there's life. And I just wish people would take better care of it. Boy, that was a big bass. Can y'all see what it broke the water right down there? And it even occurred to me to bring a bass rod and I've got crates full of bass stuff. But JB's got the right idea, don't he? Well, guys, I'm going to get a little serious about catching these fish. And uh, But, yeah, again, check out Matt's channel. And uh, hit that like and subscribe button. You know, uh, to tell you how talented this kid is, uh, he was trolling with a kayak fishing for a uh, kingfish. And something took his bait. And next thing you know, a uh, mako shark is coming 15 foot up out of the water. Just all kind of aerobatic display. And that kid is so talented. And that shark pulled him a long way out. He got that shark right up beside that kayak and released it. Um, Y'all saw that, didn't you? I think we need to come back, bring the canoe and some spinner baits. And I can show you guys some tricks on some bass fishing if y'all like to bass fish. So let me know in the comments. And uh, let me know what you think about Matt's channel. Um, he's uh, isolated right now with COVID. Uh, I had that mess and it sure messed my lungs up. And I thank the good Lord in heaven that I'm able to get out and do this. But if you guys can, wherever you may be, go fishing this weekend. And if you can't get any bait, make you some bread balls. Get you some uh, canned biscuits. And just get out and enjoy the beautiful springtime weather. I promise you, you're going to feel better. First cast, guys, and a good one. Oh, yeah, JV, a bass. A nice one. Look at there. Look at there, JV. On this crappie rod, that bass sure feels good. Look at there. Now, is that, is that boy a fisherman or what, guys? Oh, he's happy now. This guy here is gonna go in the greaser. Generally, I wouldn't keep one this size, but as you guys can see, if I can get the camera angle right, you got that thing swallowed. <laughs> JB, why don't you come on out of the water, baby? Alligators. I know you're tired of hearing that, but I got a lot, you know, I, I, I took two videos down because I got so much hate because people were just sure as world you were going to get eaten by an alligator. I, I take the bad comments down, Lord. Uh, Lord. That thing stuck me in the finger. That's why I said, Lord, has that hurt? There we go. I got it out. You know, your mama 
is going to be mad. If you'll come out of the water, I'll keep the fish. You don't come out of the water, I'm going to put him back. Come on. Now go that way. Goodness me. Yeah, see how he's bloodied up. Mm. They have to be 12 inches, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check the regulations, guys. I mean, he might make it, but uh, JB gets mad when I put bass back. He loves his bass. First cast, too. Got another one here, guys. They sure feel good on this crappie rod. You know, I love bank fishing. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a nice shell cracker. Oh, JB's happy. No, that's a bluegill, JB. A bluegill. Picked him up off the bottom. Oh, good. Oh, he's a nice one. He ain't real fat, but he sure is wide. Look at that guy. Look at him. Put him in a bucket or throw him back? Can I throw him back? You want me to throw him back? <laughs> I didn't think he did. I didn't think he wanted me to throw him back. They're busting all up. You can have one bass over 16 inches and five under 16. My battery's dying on my phone and uh, I had to call somebody real quick and get them to look it up for me. But that's, that's what it is. So I'm gonna keep that bass for JB. I usually don't keep them, but uh, he gets mad if I throw a bass back. And he sure wanted to go fishing, guys. Now, his granddaddy, he, he'd eat the fish right off the hook. He, the way I pulled him up like that, his granddaddy would have got a hold of it and snatched it right off that hook and chewed it up and swallowed it before you could say, uh-uh. Now, his daddy would go fishing with me, but he'd get up on the highest point he could and he'd sit there and just guard um but this guy here he loves to go fishing and loves water you tell him it's time to take a bath he'll walk right right in there and get in the shower he'll be waiting on you i can't wait to get a video of him driving that boat Now as that sun gets top of those trees right there, that's when the shell cracker should really kick off. I think the crappie in this lake have already spawned because I'm seeing fry just everywhere. And I don't know, to be honest with you, if I've ever caught a crappie out of here or not. I could have done without getting that hook in my finger. Yeah, you can see them all up and down through here. I can't tell you how nice and relaxing this is. I don't like my allergies in the springtime, but I sure do like spring. But I think you're blessed any time you can go fishing. It's a, not a real big lake, but it sure is a pretty one. Now guys, all I'm doing, I put a whole one on. I'm, I'm usually putting half of one of these uh, earthworms on. But all I'm doing is coming right behind the head and putting the barb in till half of the like the bottom part of the J is is missing on the hook and you can do the same thing with earthworms and shell cracker bass catfish they they can't stand it you get that in front of one of them even if it's not hungry it's gonna hit it uh, just out of instinct I don't usually use a weight that uh, big, but what I grabbed. 
Well, what I was saying earlier is uh, the last three videos that I put up, one was cat fishing and uh, the other two were crappie fishing. That's probably about uh, oh, 16 foot out there. Probably gonna bring it back up in just a second. JB was actually up the hill on that little slough that we go catch the uh, crappie in. He wasn't in any danger. And I've got a big old oak tree going this way that I'm behind. And I went to stand up and there was a gator right over over here. And he's a, he's a big gator, he's an old gator. I've seen him, I, I couldn't tell you how many times. Um, he's more curious than anything else. But you wouldn't believe the hate that I got. People saying that, you know, I just know that that gator ate that puppy. I just know he did. Um, yeah, listen, JB's my service dog. I'll put myself between him and danger. And, oh, there he goes, there he goes. Y'all see that line shoot straight back? I got to talking and wasn't paying any attention. But yeah, I, I, I bounce it in here across the bottom too. Uh, I've got that one set a little shallow, uh, hoping some of these bluegill I've been seeing swim through will pick it up. Oh, he didn't get it. But yeah, it was it was it was some real nasty comments. I don't leave the bad ones up. I. I it took me a while to figure out how to delete them. Somebody told me to leave them up. That that kind of stuff gets you more more views. That people like to get into the arguments with other people, and that's just not what what I'm about. That's not what this channel's about. Yeah, a lot of grass down there. But in a minute, I'm gonna get active with it, and. Uh, I'll leave that one stagnant. And one of you asked me a question, why why do I not have a, a bobber on? Why do I, uh, it's called tight lining. Um, you really don't have to have the line tight. Uh, but if you're gonna fish bottom, uh, especially you know in an area like this where you don't get hung too bad, I honestly will pick up more fish on the bottom than I will using a bobber. Now there's times of the year when the bluegill are biting real heavy, you know, when they're not on the bottom, they're suspended. Um, you can catch quite a few of them, you know, using a bobber. But, uh, I don't know if I stick here. Right now, they're not having it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is pull this out. We're gonna let this one go to the bottom. It won't be long and the bite's gonna turn on. It's just too beautiful of a day. But where I'm sitting right now, the water had come up Now there's a little pond back that this one drains into and there's good fishing in that, but I wouldn't eat them out of there. Over the years, people have dumped everything from car engines to bicycles to what looks like half of a trailer from a log truck. And uh, I'll eat them out of this lake, but I won't eat them out of that little drainage pond. Me and him went down there, oh, I guess it was a little over a year ago and tried it. I got a, felt like I was being stung by a bee and I looked down on my wrist right here and there was a tick and he'd already that quick embedded himself down. I know you're not itch itching that spot, are you, GB? He's got a hot spot. The vet gave me some stuff to put on it and said he won't like the taste of it. I think he loves the taste of it.
I've got boats, guys, uh, and I don't take them a lot unless I got somebody to go with me because of my spine. But I'm going to be honest with you, I prefer bank fishing to fishing out of a boat. I'm going to find me a, a, some place that sells cane poles. I want you guys to come go fishing with me and JB. I want to use that cane pole. And if we don't get any more big rain north of here, I think that's a comment if I'm pronouncing it correctly. But uh, we got a little bit of southeast wind blowing. But that move in that cork right there may trigger a bite. But yeah, don't be afraid to just kind of pick your pole up like this and just bounce your weight on the bottom. Now, if you're in real clear water and the fish can see you and you can see them, uh, you might leave it uh, still. I mean, this water is pretty clear. I want to get on that river so bad I can taste it. My earliest memory is being on that river. With a cane pole. And I think the catfish only weighed about uh, three, maybe slightly over three pounds. But my dad was hollering, it was, that's a 10 pound fish, don't lose him, don't lose him. I'll tear your butt up if you lose him. I was about three, four years old. And uh, I didn't lose him. I'd like to find that spot again. I remember what it looks like, I just don't remember. I know where we launched. Back then, there wasn't any gators. And on every limb, log, stump, there'd be a huge cottonmouth moccasin. I had a guy come and cut the yard yesterday and he said he killed uh, two snakes. I don't know what kind of snakes those are. I don't have a clue. They look like a green mamba and their their head is shaped like that. Now before y'all tell me that those come out of Africa, I do, I know that. But for a long time in the state of Florida, if you had the money, you could pretty much order any type of snake you wanted. And then if they can't handle them, they're scared of them or whatever, they just take them out in the woods and, and let them go. There's a little, it's called Black Lake. Um, it's right off of Highway 4 on the east side of Escambia River. My brother and I were fishing in there. And uh, <clears throat> we'd borrowed a John boat from a fella and we were catching some pretty nice bluegill and shell cracker. And I had broke my uh, hook. The, the hook itself actually broke. And I was trying to get it out of, a, out of a fish's mouth. And my baby brother goes, that's a big frog. That's a big frog. And I said, yeah, Jason, that's the swamp. Frogs get big in the swamp. He goes, uh-uh, that's a big frog. And he kept pointing and I turned my head and looked and there's a 12 foot snake, two and a half foot of him up out of the water. And he's got this massive frog in his mouth heading towards us. And it was a cobra. And as it got about even about the distance from here to that cork, it flattened its back out and you could see that weird mark that they have on the back of them. And of course, yeah, I, I shot it. Um, and we called the game warden and he acted like he didn't believe us, but he came on out and uh, 
He said it's a, it's a big problem. I don't have a problem with somebody that, uh, you know, is going to care for those animals correctly. But when you start dumping animals that don't belong in an area, it can really cause a lot of problems. And guys, if y'all see anybody dumping, we'd have had 45 minutes more of fishing, but I had to pick up all kind of garbage all up there. Uh, it only takes a second to pick up your bait cup. I can see where somebody was using some chicken liver right here. I'll get that one up too. I just, I don't know why people can't pick. Finally got one picked up on this one, guys. I couldn't get the hook set the camera on quick enough. Uh-oh. Hey, hey, finally a shell cracker, GB. Oh, finally a shell cracker, dude. And you're a good eating size one. Well, they got it. This one's big as my hand, but uh -oh. I can hold on to him. They got them in here three times this size. Get you in the bucket. Oh, that's why you went and got your fish. She asked you what you wanted for supper. You rascal. And doing just like they did here last year. As that sun gets down, they come up out of that deep water. He got my bait the first time. About right in there is where I picked him up at. Oh, I tell him I need to bring this one in a little closer. I tell you, them shell cracker, I love the taste of them. And I honestly believe that they outfight bluegill and crappie. There's some places on that river that I want to take you guys where the shell cracker get three pounds. I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. All I really got to do to that canoe is mount the seats in it and uh, put the numbers on it. Uh, hopefully we don't get any more nip tide and uh, get a low tide, maybe some north wind, and uh, maybe that river will get on down. And if it don't, I know a couple more lakes we can go to. early March, uh, they're biting about how I expected them to. I didn't expect it to be, you know, lightning fast. But we've, all, we've already got uh, a good mess. Um, I didn't get the camera on on all of them. You having fun back there sunbathing, aren't you? Rolling in the grass. <laughs> I'm surprised he hadn't got that stick over and gnawed it up. I'm on that. Got him. That's a good fish if I can get him out of them weeds. That's a good fish. Come on, JB, help me out. Uh oh. Uh oh, another bass. All right. JB says, I'm going to have bass for supper. You are, son. Bass sandwich. We can have five this. Can't get the camera on quick enough to show you all the hookup, but I think this one right here is going. Oh yeah, catfish. Catfish. JB, look. Channel cat. Look at there. I knew he was fighting too hard to be a, a brim or bluegill. How about that? A channel cat. A good eating size.
You gonna have a catfish sandwich too? You wanna throw him back? You wanna throw him back? <laughs> Damn, we got one going on this one. Now, he done that while ago and got my bait. Got him. A real big one, but. Uh, you'll eat. You'll eat. Big as my hand. Camera doesn't exactly do the fish justice. So this feels like a good fish, guys. Look at that pole bin. I haven't seen it yet. Got a lot of head shakes with him now. Another catfish, I think. Yep. Another catfish. Careful, beast. Careful. Yeah, eating size catfish. He gets so mad at me when I catch those big 20 and 30 pounders. And Caught one last year, 56 pounds, and let him go. Oh, JB was mad at me for two days. I told you, it's all good food, isn't it? Yeah, all good food. Say fishing just a different form of hunting to hunt you, to you, huh, beast? If I can get him to open his mouth. He said, no, that's his worm. You can have the worm if you uh, give him a hook back. I don't like handling these little guys. I always end up getting stuck. That is painful, painful, painful. There we go. There we go, bees. Catfish turned on. Well, we're gonna have a good, good dinner, aren't we? Make you some hush puppies? Make you some hush puppies? Thank you, Lord. Tell you guys, I needed this. I'm gonna put that and put on back out there too. We got about 10 more minutes. We gonna have to cut out of here. Y'all have a good one. They've watched the channel. And I am constantly pulling people's line out of that water. I uh, wanted to come over and say hello. That was that was nice of them. You know, I never saw Canadian geese down here until last year. They weren't around here when I was a boy. There's two of them right over there, just a honking. Whole time I was in Michigan, Michigan, I think one time I got a I got a shot at one of them. I shot behind him. I never could set up just right where they'd fly over and be in range. But it sure is great to see animals down here now that you didn't used to see. But I think it's got something to do with the changes in, in, the, in the way the weather is nowadays. It's getting mighty cool money fast, isn't it, bees? Getting mighty cool money fast. Look at it. Oh, he got off. He got off. There 
If there was more access to that river, I, I don't even think I'd own a boat. I just, I love fishing off the bank. Hey, I know it bothers you. You trying so hard. Thank you for helping me fish. You couldn't resist getting in that water, could you? Now well, you're gonna have to get a shower now. <laughs> Bless his heart. This might be a good one to end it on, guys. Sure feels good on this crappie rod. Sure feels good on this crappie rod. Bring them out of that deep water, that water's good and cold. Oh, they're gonna taste so good. He ain't that big, but he sure felt good. But he's big enough to eat. I think y'all can tell I want some fresh fish. And they ought to taste real good in this cold water, because that water is cold. The nights have still been pretty cold. I think the high today was 77, 78. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes, guys. A few more minutes. It's hard to stop when, when you're picking them up a few along. That one got on there and got me hung on something. Probably some more fishing line. I don't think I'm gonna be able to retrieve this one. Oh. Well, I didn't lose my bobber. I did a, I can get it all the way up here where I can get reach it. No, I didn't lose it. Didn't lose my hook, just my weight. Uh oh, worm's crawling out. Come here, buddy. We might, we might, we might. You, you want to fish? I can tell. You might be the one that catches just the right, right size, JB size. which I'm sure JB would tell you. The right size for him is a big one. He loves those big fish. And he gets so mad at me when I let them go. If I don't know the size limit on them, uh, I'm not gonna keep them. Uh, it's not worth the ticket, but uh, he sure gets mad at me when I put them back. But we done way better than what I thought we'd do. I think we got uh, 10, bluegill and shell cracker, two bass and two catfish. So we'll have a we'll have a good lunch tomorrow. And you guys are welcome to come eat if you want to. I'm not a half bad cook. This is gonna be the one to end it if I if I can land him guys. Would y'all look at that shell cracker? Thank you Lord. That's what we really came for right there, guys. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. I promise you guys, that thing weighs, I'd say almost two pounds. That's what we came for right there. My goodness. GB, look. Big and huh? I'm so glad that you hooked good because, wow, this rascal pulled. Look at that. Where you been all day? These things get mean, and they are, out of all the panfish, these are the hardest fighting, and in, in my opinion, the best tasting. Yeah, I kinda got a bucket full there. I found that old pack of cigarettes in that bag of corks. I couldn't find my regular bag, and I dug around through some of my tackle, and apparently I had put it in there. It's just an empty pack. I don't I don't leave any of my stuff out when I'm fishing. I'll make sure I pick it all up. Well, I tell you what, I I was gonna let that one be the, the, the end of it, but I got I gotta go back out there for one more. I can walk from here to the truck in the dark if I have to.
about right in there is where he picked it up at. Well, something's on. But... Oh, that water's cold. Now, something was messing with this one. But he didn't get it. We're going to go back out there. I guess we got about 10 minutes. I hope the camera's picking up what light there is. I know y'all probably can't see that cork. That little four pound line, it floats on top of the water real good. I guess I'm gonna have to order some line. I, I, I can't find this uh, high-vis uh, chartreuse colored line in any of the stores around here. I want y'all to know I am truly grateful to catch these fish and especially that last one. I've got some buddies that all they do is saltwater fish and they laugh at me. But I tell you what, you get a shellcracker that big on, and especially if you're using, you know, this is an ultralight crappie rod. And it, it's honestly, you know, it's like catching a big saltwater fish. Uh, I, I honestly thought it was a big catfish. I wasn't sure if I was going to land it. But I am honestly grateful to catch that fish. Guys, y'all get out and go fishing. Even if you don't catch them, you, you're out of the house, you're away from all the distractions. You know, take your phone in case you need need it for something. But uh, put it in your pocket. Put it someplace where you're not, you know, on there with video games and stuff and just let your mind and spirit relax and it, it can be truly rejuvenating. Yeah, you lay in there looking that way for them deer, you remember, don't you? We were out here last year and a doe come out and she had a little spotted fawn and that little spotted fawn seen JB laying and ran right up to him. Uh, I tell you, he's something else. He's laying there looking that way. It was about this time in the evening. Uh, animals just come to him. Squirrels, all, all kind of things. Just they, I guess he can talk to them somehow. But I'm hoping when his uh, girlfriend comes into season that it takes and uh, I don't know how long it takes them to, you know, go through the whole pregnancy, but uh, I think he's gonna be a great daddy. And the deal was is we get one male puppy out of it and uh, she can do what she wants with the others, but uh, I think I'm going to try to get a male and female, not because I want to get into breeding or anything like that. It's just, uh, I think that uh, he would just be a great daddy raising them up. He sure was a blessing to watch when he was a puppy. He'd get up in the mornings and go outside uh, with his daddy and his uncle. And, ooh, I think the high... If you were lucky, it got to 10 degrees. And he'd come inside and eat his breakfast. And he had his day planned out. All the different games and stuff that he was going to play. I still love to watch him now. I'll look over sometimes and he'll be watching stuff on television. And I'll change the channel. And he'll turn his head and give me a look. I've been blessed with a bunch of good uh, pups in my life. And I used to think Goldens were just big fluff balls, but I promise you that's not the case. Now something's messing with this one's got the cork on it.
I'm gonna clean these guys up and uh, we're gonna have them tomorrow about noon with some baked beans and some garlic bread and some uh, hush puppies and coleslaw. But I'm gonna take him to Whataburger and get him a get him a Whataburger here in about five minutes. Guys, I got another one on, and I'm gonna let this one be the last. I could sit here and catch them all night, to be honest with you. This is a little catfish here. But I'm gonna let it, so there, look, JB, he loves catfish. Yeah. He's not gonna get stuck either, guys. He knows they're poisonous. Oh, got him smelt down good. Can I put him in a bucket? These little half pound catfish are good to eat. They skin easy. And they usually love to stick me. Come on, open up, let me get this hook out your mouth. I was praying we'd catch them on the way over here. And, uh, I got way more than what what we need, but I got a neighbor that loves them. Y'all can see them. I mean, I got a bucket slap full, guys. So I think we're gonna cut out of here and go get JB a burger. He doesn't get them very often, but he's been such a good boy. I think he's earned one. And as y'all can see, I got some fish to clean. They have got uh, got me soaking wet, but uh, it has been fun, guys, and I'm sorry I haven't got uh, any videos out, and let me just go ahead and explain why. You guys know that the river's way up. I've got a video I'm going to put up uh, after this one where me and him went crappie fishing in a different slough, and the water was so high I had to kind of fish between the bushes and trees, and we did catch some. But then thunder and lightning started and we had to get out of there and it's a lot, that, that place is a lot harder to get in and out of. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, I got uh, bronchitis uh, about the same time back in November when I was having the blood pressure problems real bad. And uh, my lungs have been chemically burned and you know I, I used to smoke pretty heavy and I've got a little bit of uh, or the way the doctor put it a touch of emphysema and I couldn't breathe and the lung doctor had ordered another CT and uh, she never bothered to tell me hey B hang on we're gonna go in a minute what the problem was and I went to the appointment and uh, I said, thank you for seeing me so quick. She said, no, I made this appointment. I said, no, I called yesterday. Or maybe you'd already had it made, but they said they could see me today. And she said, well, I got good news. Uh, the tumor, in your, the mass in your chest is gone. And I said, well, thank the Lord. You didn't tell me there was one in there. Yeah, I found it last year. So April of last year. And uh, she said, keep the appointment with a cardiologist. You've got a 4.1 centimeter aneurysm on the top of your heart. Ascending aorta is what she said. I went to the cardiologist and he said, it's not one of those. And I said, well, what is it? And he said, well, it's not 4.1 centimeters, it's 3.8. They didn't take into account for your height. But the radiologist uh, used a poor choice of words. And I said, well, what is it? He said, don't worry about it. Well, that don't cut it with me. Um, <clears throat> and I had a horrible time breathing. And when I would, I could walk to the mailbox and it would be a chore to come back. I would be gasping for air. So I don't know if it is or if it ain't, but I've got a referral into the grandson of my granddaddy's cardiologist. And he kept my grandfather alive for almost 20 years longer than anybody said he'd live. So I'm hoping his grandson's just as good as his, as his granddaddy. But uh, 
between that and the river is why I hadn't been putting videos up. No, I still ought to, I, I know it's almost black dark, but I'm gonna make one more cast, guys. This is an even lighter action rod than that one. I can get everything kind of put together. Uh, don't nothing get on it, not, well, get everything put up and we'll just call that catfish it for the day because we've, we've had a blessed afternoon. We've only been out here about two hours and to get a bucket full in two hours is, is real good. Especially this time of the year with the nights being cold and the days just starting to warm up. And I seen the cork twitch. But you guys check out uh, Nomadic, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's Nomadic Kayak Fishing. Um, especially if you guys like kayak fishing, and especially if you like red snapper, uh, and there's be beautiful scenery in it. Um, but y'all check out Matt's channel, and uh, we will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Me and JB sure appreciate it. Please hit that like button and uh, the subscribe button if you had not already. Uh, <clears throat> and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Y'all be blessed. Bye-bye.